John, you believe there's one world, the world that we see, and that's kind of it. Uh, other people say there's a spirit world, two worlds. Some others say that there might even be three, yeah. with a platonic world of uh, numbers and universals, and some people would have four. You'd have a physical, a mental, a spiritual, a platonic. I mean, these yeah. seem to multiply. Well, I, I think it's a sign of intellectual laziness if you allow your realities to multiply. Just describe the facts. And then what you'll find is that the facts of uh, the empirical reality, the things you can see and you find out about in the sciences, I, they form a unity. There's a single universe that we live in. Now, there are two reasons why people want to reject that. On one hand, they want to say, well, no, there's a mental reality that's in addition to that, and I think that's a mistake. It's not necessary to postulate a different realm in order to account for the existence of consciousness and intentionality as biological phenomena. However, another reason that they make this mistake is they see, well, clearly there are mathematical entities, and mathematical entities don't uh, occupy space, they don't function causally, so it looks like they must be in a different realm. And I think that's a confusion as well. If there are two horses in the field, well, how many things are there in the field? Is there just this horse and that horse, or is also the property of hoarseness? Mm -hmm. And is there then the property of two-ness? And there, I think, now we have to do a little bit of philosophy of language. The fact that makes it the case that there, there are two horses in the field is the same fact as would make it the case that the property of hoarseness is twice instantiated, <laughs> or that the property two-ness is instantiated by one set, the set of horses. Those are just three different ways of saying the same thing. There isn't any additional fact which is postulated by talking about numbers or properties. It's just a manner of speaking. Uh, all of that makes yeah. wonderful sense and well thought out, but that whole process of thinking, if there were never anything, if there was no universe, no yeah. laws, no pe nothing, zero, that still would have been true. The temptation always in philosophy is to suppose that there must be some deep mystery. How can there be an infinite sequence of natural numbers stretching out forever and ever? How can they be timeless? And the way to get out of all these mysteries is to bring it down to real life cases. Numbers are to count with. So if you can count, then you've already got numbers. And if you've got numbers, then you can imagine a world in which no one was able to account, but you still want to be able to say, well, all the same, there are still these numbers. But the mistake is to think that there's some deep, profound truth about a, a mysterious realm that you've postulated. What you've done is describe a feature of our, uh, of our language. Do numbers exist? Of course. But that's a manner of speaking. It doesn't mean that in the field there are two horses plus the number two. Why is it? Why am I so bothered by this? I, I, I hear what you're saying, I understand what you're saying, but I still think you eliminate everything and, and, and numbers still exist. I, 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 I can't get out of that. Well, but then that's a mark of the philosopher. Uh, the mark of the philosopher is to be obsessed by questions that don't seem to have any practical interest and which most people don't worry about at all. I'm trying to get you to see that we have a natural urge to ask this question in this way but the way to solve the question is not to give a direct answer. Yes, numbers are way out there. Uh, you just can't see them. Uh, or no, numbers don't exist at all. Both of those are wrong. Both of those uh, make the same mistake. The way out of it is to see how we actually work with the numerical vocabulary and how the way we operate with that vocabulary naturally generates an infinite sequence of natural numbers which are not themselves spatially located and they don't have any weight. So if we take some of these worlds that are postulated, we have our physical world, which yeah. we all subscribe to. Mental world, we eliminate because we don't need it to have consciousness. Spiritual world, if you believe in some god or something you need, but you don't need it. And the platonic world of universals and numbers is, in a sense, a, a, it's a an manner artifact, of speaking. Yeah. manner it's of speaking from our language. Exactly. It's an artifact of our discourse. It's not a special metaphysical realm. So you're just comfortable living with our one little world now. Well, it's the only one I've got. It's a poor thing, but it's my own.